Now you can see what a mess I have in here. It's actually not a mess. It's just storage, dry storage. There we go. Glenn's replacing the plastic for me today. Zippy supervising. We can reuse this. Just because we can't use it on the greenhouse doesn't mean that we can't cover the garden with it or something. I had some kale coming up and between and radishes and spinach. And I know that looks pretty small, but it was getting some good size on it. And then we had a horrible, horrible windstorm followed by snow. <laughs> Greenhouse could be naked pretty soon. That's okay. All this black stuff here is from last year. That's not mold. That's, you know what that is? That's dead bees. The bees got in here and then got, they were attracted to the wood. Because when the wood was really hot, it would kind of bubble up this stuff they were attracted to. And, and they got in there and yeah. That's bee organic matter. I had a really nice spinach plant growing in the greenhouse underneath one of those tins. And if a mouse didn't come in there last night, eat it on me. Dirty rotter. Ooh, shiny new plastic. This is six mil plastic. Glenn didn't want to go any uh, thinner than that because it's just not strong enough for our, our 100 plus kilometer an hour winds here. Glenn's helping me put up the cabbage tunnel today. I did a cabbage tunnel uh, video of us putting it up for the first time last year. And boy, does it ever work good. I'll link that for you guys at the end of the video. Go check that out. So I mostly planted the greenhouse today. Today is May 23rd. I feel pretty confident. It's supposed to be rainy and cold here the next week well four days I feel pretty confident that it's not gonna freeze at night time however I do have some garden fabric to cover stuff with if it does freeze and I have these little hats that actually do work pretty good so along this wall here those are the climbing the indeterminate tomatoes and I put some along the back there too. They can climb up that little fence back there. So the greenhouse is going to look a little different this year because I'm not growing other stuff in there, just peppers and tomatoes and I'll throw some marigolds in here and probably some basil because those things work pretty good together. So we'll see how this goes. I left the pots by all the plants until I made a map of the greenhouse so I knew who was growing where. And 
uh, wash them out and I'll transplant some stuff into those now that I have uh, some extra pots. Happy day! These first two beds are completely planted. And that's all that's happening over here so far. Last year we had the corn behind the greenhouse. And this year I'll show you where we have it. This is a big garden and so far my stuff is completely planted. Left to right I have two rows of potatoes. One is red potato, one is Yukon gold. In front of me here, my onions are coming up nicely. They were onion sets. And down at the end I'll show you I have some onions I grew from seed. I haven't got them all out yet. This row down to the white tunnel is all carrots. There's three different varieties. This row is going to be beets. A few different varieties, some golden, some two beets, and just some regular red beets. And here's a double row of peas. So when they get big enough to support that, I'll put a fence between them. They, there isn't a very large row of peas there. And I don't know if I've planted anything in that. <laughs> oh yeah, I did. I planted beans. This is what happens when you don't write it down right away. On this fence, I'm going to get rid of this junk. I'm going to plant some more tomatoes. I have some more indeterminate tomatoes I could use the fence to crawl. And under the tunnel, as you saw earlier, I have the cabbages and Brussels sprouts. And we can extend this tunnel. I just need to buy some more of that white pex line to do it. So we finished this end of the garden um, this morning. This row here to the grass is slicing cucumbers and pickling cucumbers. I'm super excited. And you can see the little sticks out in the garden. I Glenn mapped that out for me. So each squash has a hundred square feet to grow in a 10 by 10 little area. So that's exciting. So there are one, two, three rows of squash that lead up to uh, my sister-in-law's half of the garden that she uses. And by each squash plant, I put in a few corn seeds, so I don't know what it'll look like, whether it'll be funny or just what it'll, you know, what it'll be, but we'll see. And then the very end down here, the very last row, I should grab my hammer, is corn. So not only did I plant corn by each one of the squash plants, but we finished off this west side of the garden with some corn. Now there's another row of space available there, but it might be nice just to leave that as a buffer. So we're expecting some rain over the next few days, like I said. So let's, let's hope it comes. I'm ready. I almost forgot to show you some of the onions I started by seed. These are talon onions and they're supposed to be a nice keeper. And I also have some yellow onions inside, so after the arrow, I have a spot to put some of those out here. I don't know, lots of my YouTuber friends are like, oh, do you grow them from seed? And I'm like, ooh, well, really, it's so much work. When I could buy, like, a package of, like, 50 bulbs or something for three bucks and start them from seed. Anyway, that's this year's little onion experiment. We'll see how it goes.